Buffers are a very important thing, but what exactly do they do? Well, that's what we're going to be taking a look at in this video. In simple terms, a buffer is an amplifier with a gain of 1, which means that the input signal is the same as the output signal. This might sound like a completely useless thing, but it has several very important purposes. In order to understand why we need a buffer, we need to understand how voltage sources work in the real world rather than in simulation. All electrical signals are voltage sources in some way, and can be represented by two things, an ideal voltage source and a resistor. This means there is a resistance in any voltage source. It's usually quite low, but they can be quite high in some scenarios, like in a guitar pickup. The problem is, when we connect a load in conjunction with the resistor on our voltage source, this acts as a potential divider and changes the voltage. But what is a potential divider? And why does it matter? Let's consider a simple circuit. We connect a resistor across a voltage source. At one end of the resistor, we have the input voltage, let's say 5 volts. And at the other end of the resistor, we have the ground, or 0 volts. We can say that there is a 5 volt drop over this resistor, because one end is at 5 volts and the other end is at 0 volts. Now, if we connect a second resistor, of the same value in series with the first resistor, they will still have the same total voltage drop of 5 volts, as there is still a 5 volt source and ground on the other end. However, we now have two resistors, and the middle point of that resistor will be 2.5 volts, because half the voltage drop happens over each resistor. This means each resistor has a voltage drop of 2.5 volts, meaning the voltage has been divided by 2. We can alter the relative resistances of these two resistors and generate any output voltage we want as long as it's less than the input. The voltage at the middle is given by the formula V out equals V in times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 which basically says that the voltage out is equivalent to the voltage in times the ratio of R2 to the total resistance. Now here's where things get interesting. If we connect a load to the centre point of R1 and R2, the load is now in parallel with R2, and thus decreases the resistance. The formula for resistors in parallel is quite simple. 1 over the total resistance equals 1 over R2 plus 1 over R load, we'll call it. We can rearrange this by taking both sides to the power of negative 1, and thereby flipping the fraction. As R total over 1 is simply R total, we can rearrange this formula to be R total equals 1 over R2 plus 1 over R load to the power of negative 1. If we substitute this into our voltage divider formula, you can see now that the output voltage is now dependent not only on R2, but also on the resistance of the load as well. We can actually simplify this further by using Thevenin's principle of equivalence, which states that any number of resistors and voltage sources can be modelled by a single ideal voltage source and a resistor. This means that our complex circuit here can actually be modelled by a single resistor and an ideal voltage source. You're beginning to see now that this actually looks a hell of a lot like a real-world voltage source. And that would be because it is. As interesting as this is, what the hell does it have to do with buffers and why we need them? Any circuit, no matter how well designed it is, will have impedance. And sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes that's a bad thing. 
and buffers deal with both sides of that coin. Let's take a guitar, for example. If I plug my guitar into my amplifier with a superconducting cable, i.e. a cable with no resistance, there's no problem because the amplifier has the required 1 mega ohm impedance that my guitar is looking for. <laughs> Now, let's unplug my guitar and plug it through several effects pedals which aren't turned on. This is probably the worst case scenario, because I've connected each pedal with a 3 meter cable, which for my American viewers is around 13 feet. If you play a lot of music, you might note that this sounds like the mid and treble frequencies are being cut, and that's exactly what's happening. This is because all cables are inductors, albeit very tiny values. Inductors are very unique in the fact that they increase their impedance for higher frequencies. Basically, in simple terms, the resistance gets higher the higher the frequency is. I'm not going to explain impedance versus resistance in this video. I've got another one for that. If we take a look back at our voltage divider, as we increase this resistance, we increase R1 and then decrease the amount of voltage reaching the amplifier. What a buffer can do is isolate the input impedance from the output impedance. This basically gives us a reset on the higher frequencies, so we lose less of them than we would otherwise. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider subscribing. We'll take a look at some more things next week. Until I see you again, goodbye, and remember to always investigate.